I've been trying to put a segment together like this. Um, I mean, I'd always have time each week, um, but there's just so many interesting things that are part of history that a lot of times textbooks leave out. Um, and I also have a lot of interesting objects that go with some of our units. So I thought um, could use segments like this to try to show you some of them. So given that we're studying the scientific revolution this week, I wanted to show you a couple of my favorite objects and then tell you some really good stories. So first is um, Galileo, of course, being the famous um, scientist. So this item here, a little oddity, it's called a Galileo thermometer. Now what you can see with it is that it the liquid little cylinders have different densities in the liquid and they're sensitive to temperature. So wherever the gap is, is what temperature it is. So currently in my little den here, it is about 70, between 70 and 72, because each cylinder has a two degree gap. So if I come in closer, you can kind of see the temperature. Um, and so they sell these with more cylinders and more gradations, but um, you know when it's colder, this will drop its temperature. So um, that is item number one. Item number two, this is one of my all-time favorites, but um, you know, I got to kind of walk you through it. So I found this uh, several years ago, and if you look at it, it is a, supposed to be a model of the solar system. Makes a handy doorstop for other things. But if you notice it, what would be the error? Okay, so what's in the middle? Well, you can see the Earth. So this is a geocentric model of the solar system with the Earth. Then, of course, the sun being your biggest. And since they only knew planets out to Jupiter, it has um, some of the others, although this being somewhat inaccurate doesn't have all of them. But as you can see, it's got, you know, very flexible, kind of moves around. Now, this is not, however, what makes it super um, intriguing. What makes it also interesting is when I bought this um, at kind of a secondhand store, when I saw the label, I said, I must own this. Because if you look at the label, it is labeled Copernican universe, which of course um, Copernicus was, um, you know, this was not. In fact, he is the one who got rid of what's called the geocentric model for the heliocentric model. So the fact that it was mislabeled uh, makes it kind of an extra item of amusement. Okay, so we're here live in the Sandberg kitchen because I want to talk to you about Henry VIII's wives, which I know is something we studied last week, but is still worthwhile. So one of my favorite items I own is this mug that has good old Hank there and his six wives. And in case uh, you don't know, my daughter has uh, shown me the, the joys of the musical called Six that has a hip hoppy version of Henry VIII's wives. Now this mug, what will happen is when you put hot water on it, the um, wives will disappear. Now, as I pour the water into this, um, there, the rhyme to remember is, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. And that is how one can keep track of Henry VIII and his honeys. So, we'll set this down. So, as you can see with my excellent camera work, they are already starting to disappear. Where did they go? Remember, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. So, there you go. So we start with Catherine of Aragon, who he divorced for Anne Boleyn. The love letters between them are R-rated because she would not give him the keys to the amusement park till he uh, promised her the ring. Then you have... Um, Jane Seymour, who gave him his son, but which is why he was doing all the divorces, but he died. Then as he got older, he turned into the grande version you see here. Then um, Anne of Cleves, who he married uh, through a picture, because that's how you traded things, and she was so hideous, according to him, he just basically put her up in a palace and um, uh, didn't really marry her, and then um, ended up beheading his advisor who pushed the wedding. Then you have um, Catherine Howard, who he really did love, but she was like an 18 year old hottie and he was not able to give her, I think, what she needed. So she cheated on him and that didn't end well. 
And then um, Catherine Parr, who was his final wife, who um, she outlived him and um, there you go. But his favorite was Jane Seymour because she gave him that son. And even though Edward died at 16, um, he's actually buried at Windsor Castle next to um, Jane Seymour. And so that is the story of Henry VIII and his wives. Now we're just going to tell you just some of the interesting stories just about some of the people you're going to read about this week. So um, one of the key astronomers in this era was a guy named Tycho Brahe. Now, Tycho Brahe um, it, it was important because he did a lot of the observations that other astronomers coming after him were going to um, build off his numbers. So Kepler, uh, people like that. But Tycho Brahe has a really interesting way he died. Any, you look up uh, kind of sad ways to die. So Tycho Brahe, he lived a reasonably long life. I think he was in his 50s, but he was at a dinner party and he really had to go. Like, but he thought it was rude to ask to go to the bathroom. So he held it and he held it. Now, when you're an old guy, stuff can happen. And actually his bladder ruptured and he died about two weeks later because he was too polite to ask to go to the bathroom. Um, so um, many stories about that. Now, now the last one we'll hear about is Galileo. Now Galileo has many, many interesting stories. Um, and of course he's famous for really challenging Aristotelian physics and of course pointing his telescope at Jupiter and discovering the moons. But what he's also known for is one of the infamous chapters in Catholic Church history, which is um, that um, towards the end of his life, he published his book which was a treatise, I think, uh, on the different models of the solar system. And the way Galileo wrote his books, and they're actually pretty readable, is they were dialogues between different people. And so he would have characters and he would put the arguments for each system in their mouths. Um, now, it, when he was actually friends with the Pope that he ended up getting in hot water with, and this Pope was seen as somewhat open-minded, but he sort of had to kind of toe the line somewhat. So it was, well, Galileo, you can go somewhat far in saying your model's working, but you can't go all the way. So what happened was Galileo, basically, when he wrote his book, went too far. So what he did was he wrote the characters' names. And so I forget um, who his, um, the main character was, but the character that was representing the heliocentric model, or the geocentric model, which was also kind of an actual caricature of the Pope, he gave the name Simplicio, which is kind of like naming your person Stupidicus. And he actually put actual quotes from the Pope in there so when the Pope um, saw the book finally, he kind of went into a, a tr Trump level, President Trump level tirade. If there had been Twitter, he would have been all over it. And so that is actually what Galileo got Galileo in trouble. And he's an old man at this point. So he basically, the expression is falls on his sword, says, I'm sorry, I, whatever I meant in the book, I didn't mean it. And he recants his beliefs. Now, the legend is probably not true, but after he apologizes and says, no, the sun doesn't, you know, earth doesn't go around the sun, he turns at the end of his trial and says in a whisper, but it still moves, implying that the church can say what it wanted. Probably not true, but it does make for a great story. Um, so anyway, that is our history story corner for the week.